Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to the new series that helps you understand lots of great native English content right here on YouTube. Before we get started, if you'd like subtitles and full transcripts for these videos, you can click on the link in this video or in the description below this video. I want to say also thank you to Bill Hammock, the engineer guy, for allowing us to use these clips in this video. Bill does an excellent job of explaining how the can was created as well as the engineering behind it, and he has a fantastic voice. He has a really great way of enunciating and focusing when he's trying to teach a new word and then moving very quickly and blending his speech when he's moving through more basic everyday language. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the words he uses, but mostly we're going to focus on the blending of speech. Let's begin. Our first phrase is, we'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. Listen carefully to the clip. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. Now, the die is what shapes the piece of metal so that we can turn a uh, simple piece of circular metal into a can. And when we're looking at a slice of something in engineering terms, we're not looking at the whole thing. We're taking a piece of it and opening it up to look at the slice or look at a slice of something. But here's where the sound blending gets interesting. We'll look at, if I'm going to say this slowly, we'll look at, but blending it together, it becomes look at, look at, look at. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. And in the same way, a slice of the die becomes slicer, slicer, a slicer. We'll look at a slice of the die. We'll look at a slice of the die. We'll look at a slice of the die. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. So we can see what's happening. So we can see what's happening. Instead of can, can see what's happening, we've got can see what's happening. Can see what's happening. Can see what's happening. So when we say the whole thing quickly, we'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. Watch the clip again. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. We'll look at a slice of the die so we can see what's happening. This sound blending is really important. Whenever we have sounds where it becomes easier and faster for us to express ourselves by blending the sounds of words together, especially when we have something like a consonant and a vowel, so look, and then we've got the A for at, look at, we blend it together. Look at, look at look at. For our next section of sound blending, we're taking two consonants and putting them together. Now, if you look closely at the top of the can body, you see that the edges are wavy and uneven. Now, if you look closely at the top of the can body, you see that the edges are wavy and uneven. Now, if you look closely at the top of the can body, you see that the edges are wavy and uneven. Now, if you look closely at the top of the can body, now, if you look closely, look closely at the top of the can body. Now, if you look closely at the top of the can body, notice that we've got look and then we've got another k, k for closely. So we're going to have to remove one of those C sounds because it's again, just faster to say, look closely, look closely. The K from look disappears. Look closely, look closely. If you look closely at the top of the can body, if you look closely at the top of the can body, the second part of this phrase is, you can see that the edges are wavy and uneven. Wavy and uneven. And is another word that becomes shortened. Wavy and uneven. Wavy and uneven. Wavy and uneven. You see that the edges are wavy and uneven. You see that the edges are wavy and uneven. In this next clip, I want to look at a word that we shorten. And again, we're shortening it because it's easier and faster to pronounce it this way. This prevents the drink from acquiring a metallic taste and also keeps acids in the beverage from dissolving the aluminum. This prevents the drink from acquiring a metallic taste and also keeps acids in the beverage from dissolving the aluminum. This prevents the drink from acquiring a metallic taste and also keeps acids in the beverage from dissolving the aluminum. The first part of the sentence is, this prevents the drink from acquiring a metallic taste. This prevents the drink from acquiring a metallic taste. 
Now, to acquire means to receive something, to get something, but it's just a longer way of expressing this. To acquire a metallic taste. So when you have a metal container like an aluminum can, but you don't put a coating on the inside of it, then the can flavor starts to get into the drink. So the drink will taste like an aluminum can. But the word acquiring gets shortened to acquiring, 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 acquiring. Again, because we're shortening it. Listen to the clip. This prevents the drink from acquiring a metallic taste. This prevents the drink from acquiring a metallic taste. The second part of this is, and also keeps acids in the beverage from dissolving the aluminum. And also keeps acids in the beverage from dissolving the aluminum. We've got acids in the beverage. So beverage means drink. We're talking about whatever the drink is inside the can. And then to dissolve means to make it go away. So on the outside of a can or on the outside of the can, there is the decoration or image for the branding of that can, what the drink is. But on the inside, we've also got a thin layer of coating so that neither the, the flavor of the can can touch the drink. So you don't get that metallic flavor, but also you don't get the flavor of the drink or the acids in the drink dissolving the outside metal. And also keeps acids in the beverage from dissolving the aluminum. And also keeps acids in the beverage from dissolving the aluminum. Listen carefully. Acids in. Acids in. Acids in. The acids in the beverage. The acids in the beverage. The acids in the beverage. And also keeps acids in the beverage. And also keeps acids in the beverage. Next, we've got some more shortening of a word, and this is the word retract. Retract. To retract something, and listen carefully for the full pronunciation, retract. Retract. This means to pull something back. You can pull back a physical thing like retracting a machine, retracting an arm, or you can even retract something like a statement. So if someone says something stupid or rude or racist on TV, then other people will say, hey, do you want to retract that statement? Do you want to apologize for that, to retract something? But the word here is retracts. So it's retracts, and it's quite complicated to say slowly, retract retracts, retracts. But if we just say it quickly, we're going to just use an X sound. Retracts, retracts, retracts. By itself, retracts is not retracts, retracts. But we're saying it quickly, and in the context of the sentence, you understand what's happening. Listen to the clip. The necking sleeve retracts, the inner die retracts, and the can moves to the next stage. The necking sleeve retracts, the inner die retracts, and the can moves to the next stage. The necking sleeve retracts, the inner die retracts, and the can moves to the next stage. Now we'll say it correctly in a blended way, but a little bit more slowly. The necking sleeve retracts, the necking sleeve retracts, the inner die retracts. The necking sleeve retracts, the inner die retracts. The necking sleeve retracts, the inner die retracts, the necking sleeve retracts, the inner die retracts. And the final part of this is, and the can moves to the next stage. And the can moves to the next stage. Notice the word to gets shortened and blended as well. Moves to the next stage, moves to the next stage. We don't say moves to the next stage because that's more difficult to say. It takes more time and effort. So moves to the next stage, moves to the next stage. And the can moves to the next stage. And the can moves to the next stage. And for our final sound blending, this is again the kind of thing that we were talking about before where we've got a consonant and a vowel. This often, this often, this often. So said slowly, this often becomes the soften, the soften, the soften. This often contaminated the can's contents. 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 To contaminate means to have a pure substance, but to put something else in there, probably that shouldn't be in there. So maybe if you have a pure glass of water, but you put some drops of poison in it, you are contaminating that drink to contaminate something. This often contaminated the can's contents. This often contaminated the can's contents. 
In general, when you're thinking about sound blending, try to think about how you would say something really quickly. So in the case of this, we've got lots of examples and even more than what I've just introduced in this quick video. But in general, if you've got a consonant and a vowel, or a vowel and a consonant, and you're putting them together, we're blending that sound together. We're blending that sound together. This soften. This soften. Or if we've got two of the same sound together, then we're going to remove one of those and just kind of put a little bit of space in the sentence where we're saying it, but we only say the sound one time. So if I say look closely, look closely, I would read that or I would say that quickly in a conversational way as look closely, look closely closely. So I'm giving a little bit of space where the K for look might be, but I'm saying it faster and at a normal speed because people understand what I'm saying without pronouncing the whole thing. Look closely. Look closely. Look closely. Well, that's it for this quick review of sound blending. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, do click that like button and share this video with anyone else who might be struggling to pronounce words more smoothly and like a native speaker. Also, if you have something you struggle with about the language, it could be vocabulary or a way of expressing yourself or a grammar point, let us know in the comments section below as well as any other content that you'd like to see featured in this series. Do click on the link in this video to go and watch the Engineer Guide full video about how the can evolved so that you can learn more about that. What's great about his video, again, not only the way he speaks, but when you're watching the video, there are lots of physical demonstrations and diagrams of how things are made. So it's easy to connect the English vocabulary that you're learning and to be able to learn it uh, more naturally without having any explanations in your native language. He's also got subtitles, which you can use by clicking on the little CC button right here on the lower right of your screen or in the lower right of this video. I hope you enjoyed the lesson again if you have click that like button and I will see you in the next video bye bye now click on the link in this video to go to the engineer guys explanation about the evolution and the creation of the aluminum can and if you have not done so already we have a simple fluency quiz that will help you find your biggest fluency frustration so that you can solve it and start getting fluent to three, or even ten times faster. Click on the link to take that quiz, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep practicing, and have a great day.